This is the listening test for levels from 3 to 5 of the Vietnam 6 level language proficiency test. There are three parts to the test. You will hear each part once. For each part of the test there will be time for you to look through the questions and time for you to check your answers. Write your answers on the question paper. You will have five minutes at the end of the test to transfer your answers onto the answer sheet. The recording will now be start. Please ask any question now because you must not speak during the test. Now open your question paper and look at part one. There are eight questions in this part. For each question there are four options and a short recording. For each question, choose the correct answer A, B, C or D. You now have 45 seconds to look through the questions and the options in each question. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. One. When is the man's appointment? Good morning. I'd like someone to cut my hair, please. Can I make an appointment? Certainly. Um, Wednesday or Thursday morning or Friday afternoon? On Friday, I'm going to go to France. What about Thursday afternoon? I'm afraid I have a meeting all day Wednesday. Well, it's a little difficult, but if that's the only afternoon you can come, we'll see you then. Two. Which is the aunt's postcard? Look, Sandra, I got this really nice postcard from my aunt. Oh, what a pretty village. And it's right by a river. Is it in the mountains? Yes. But you can't see them in the picture. Hmm. Perhaps they're behind those tall trees. Three. What time will the plane to Milan leave? Excuse me. What time is the next plane to Milan? It should leave at quarter past seven. But it's an hour late today. Oh, that's a problem. If it doesn't leave until quarter past eight, I'll be one hour late for my meeting. I'm sorry, sir. There's nothing I can do. Four. Which present has the girl bought her mother? Hi, it's me, Jane. I've got Mum's birthday present. I think she'll like it. Yes, that's right. A gold-coloured one. She's always writing letters, so she'll find it useful. Mm. I thought about a CD, but I'm never really sure what music she likes. And Dad's bought her a new pair of earrings for her birthday anyway. I'm sure she'll like what I've got her. 5. What time will the pie be ready? What time is it, Mum? Do you think the apple pie will be ready yet? It's 4.35. And the pie went into the oven at quarter past four? That's right. You could check it at five and turn the heat down a bit, but don't take it out until 20 past. That's 45 minutes to go. OK. I'm hungry already. Six. What time is the swimming lesson today? Hi, Judy. Do you want to play tennis after school? Say about 4.30? Mm, that would be fun, but I've got a swimming lesson. It's usually at a quarter past five, but it's half an hour earlier this evening at a quarter to five. It takes me ages to cycle to the swimming pool, so I really don't think I'll have time today. Let's try tomorrow. OK. Seven. Which subject does the boy like best? I really like the new IT teacher. Our project for this term is to design a new website. I've always wanted to know how to do that. The sports teacher is much more serious, but that's still my favourite subject.
Last year, I used to really like geography, but the teacher we have now gives us so much homework. Eight. Which T-shirt does the boy decide to buy? I'd like to buy a black T-shirt with short sleeves, please, large size. I'm afraid the black ones have long sleeves, but we've got short sleeves in the lighter colours. Do you want a round neck or a V-neck? Ah,、uh, it must be round neck.、Uh, let me think. Um, okay, I'll take one of the short sleeved ones. The colour's not so important, really. That is the end of part one. Now turn to part two. You will hear three different conversations. In each conversation, there are four questions. For each question, choose the correct answer A, B, C, or D. You will hear the conversations only once. Now open your question paper and look at the conversation one. You now have 25 seconds to look through the questions and the options in each question. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. I don't remember much of that lecture. The doctor gave me this medicine for my cough, but I don't like it. It seems to make me awfully sleepy, and I can't follow my lectures. Well, if you don't take it, none of us will be able to follow our lectures. All we'll hear is you coughing. Oh dear! Do you think I'll annoy everybody? Yes. You could study at home for a couple of days. You know, have some time off until it gets better. Oh, I couldn't do that. I'd miss too much, and I get really uncomfortable when I have a lot of catching up to do. Last year, I missed a whole week when I fell off my bike and had that enormous bandage on my hand. It took me ages to do all the work when I came back. Oh, you worry too much. You can work at home. Just get Mr. Gray to tell you which parts of the course book we'll be covering, and read it yourself at home. All he does is go through the book anyway. You might as well do it yourself. Oh, that's a bit unfair. I think Mr. Gray's really nice. He's always willing to stay behind after class if you don't understand something. Being really nice and never in a hurry doesn't make him a good lecturer. Anyway, I think you should look after your health first. And hours. If we sit in that small hot room with you for the next three days, we'll all have your cough by the end of it.、Mm, perhaps you're right. I don't care about myself, but I wouldn't like other people to blame me for their illnesses. I have got a bit of a temperature now too, so maybe I'll go and see Mr. Gray after lunch and tell him I won't be at this afternoon's lecture. Or the next two. Come on. You've got to get better. I suppose you're right. Then we can all go out as we planned at the weekend. Okay then. I don't want to miss that, and I do feel ill. Now open your questions paper and look at conversation two. You now have twenty-five seconds to look through the questions and the options in each question. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. What shall we do tonight? Shall we go out somewhere? No, I'm tired. I've had a really hard day. That's a bit boring. Come on, let's go to a cinema or see that new play at the theatre. Not tonight. Why don't we rent a video and stay in? Well, I'd rather go out. But if you're tired, okay. So, what shall we have? How about that new Italian film? Oh no, far too serious for me. I'd fall asleep. 
Why can't we get something funny? A film with Rick Moranis or someone like that. A comedy? No, thanks. I'm not wasting my money. Well, I'll pay if you're going to be difficult about it. Well, I'm not being difficult. I just don't want to see a comedy. Fine. Well, what else do you suggest then? How about a Robert De Niro? We've seen them all. Maybe, but they're great films. Let's watch one again. Now you're suggesting something that's a real waste of money, and I hate seeing films twice. You know that. Okay, okay. What then? Oh, forget it. We're obviously not going to agree anyway. No, I tell you what. You go down to the video shop and choose a film. Whatever it is, I'll watch it. Really? And you won't be difficult or make me feel guilty. No. Go on. Off you go. I'll make something to eat while you're out. Great. See you in a few minutes then. Bye.、Mm. Now open your questions paper and look at conversation three. You now have twenty-five seconds to look through the questions and the options in each question. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. Hi, Ben. Only one more week at college, and then the summer holidays begin. Great, isn't it? I don't know. It might get a bit boring. I don't think I've got enough money to go anywhere nice for a holiday this year. It would be nice to have lots of money to spend, but a good holiday doesn't have to be expensive. Oh yes, it does. The best holiday I ever had was a few years ago when I went to Greece. I want to fly off somewhere hot and lie on the beach and go swimming. Yes, well, I can't afford to do that either. So, what are you doing this summer? I'm going on a walking holiday in Scotland with some friends. We went last year and we really enjoyed it. We walked all day and spent the nights in youth hostels. Why don't you come with us? We're going for two weeks. It won't cost much, and you'll come home feeling really relaxed and fit.、Mm, I'm not sure. Walking all day sounds like hard work to me, and surely you're not hoping for lots of sunshine in Scotland. <laughs> it did rain a bit last year, but most of the time it was sunny. Anyway, it's not good walking in the heat. You have to stop all the time to rest and have drinks. Well, I like the sun. And I like to stay in comfortable hotels, not youth hostels. But they are comfortable. They're basic, and the food's often not very good. But they're very clean and cheap. In fact, I prefer them to hotels because the people are always so friendly. Hmm. Maybe. Look, Lisa. Thanks a lot for asking me, but I think I'll just stay home and get bored. Right. That is the end of part two. Now turn to part three. You will hear three different talks or lectures. In each talk or lecture, there are five questions. For each question, choose the correct answer A, B, C, or D. You will hear the talks or lectures only once. Now open your questions paper and look at talk or lecture one. You now have thirty-five seconds to look through the questions and the options in each question. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. I was a small child when I left Vietnam and moved with my family to live in America. For me and my little brother, it didn't take long before we felt American. But for my parents and two older sisters, it was a different story. The biggest problem for my mother was the language. We were living in New York, and although there were quite a lot of Vietnamese families near us, they didn't work in the stores. This meant my mother had to take me with her when she went shopping, and I was usually at school. For my father, the most important thing when we arrived was to find a job. 
Luckily, he had friends who knew us in Vietnam, and they helped him get a job in a factory. It was hard for him to do that sort of work. In Saigon, he had been a doctor. My two older sisters went to high school. They worked hard and did well, and the school gave them extra English lessons. Even now, though, they speak with Vietnamese accents. My brother and I are lucky. We may look Vietnamese, but we speak with American accents. My family found the way of life very different. In Vietnam, my mother used to spend a lot of time visiting her sisters and brothers and looking after her mother and father. She feels quite lonely now. She says that in America you live inside your house, but in Vietnam you take your house outside onto the street and share your life with everybody. I don't remember that, but I do find the winters are quite hard to put up with in New York. It's very cold and snows a lot. My mother still wears traditional Vietnamese clothes at home and always cooks us rice and noodles. <laughs> I must admit, I prefer burgers and chips. <laughs> Although my friends <laughs> like to visit us, I often feel a bit embarrassed by my parents' way of life. They don't understand Americans, and I think I am more American than Vietnamese now. I suppose it's sad for them to have such a strange daughter. Now open your question paper and look at Talker Lecture 2. You now have 35 seconds to look through the questions and the options in each question. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. In American schools, almost every classroom is a mix of boys and girls. However, it was not always this way. In the past, schools did not teach girls subjects like science and math. In 1972, a law called Title IX was made in America. It gave girls an equal chance at education. Since then, Boys and girls have been taught together. Recently, though, some schools are reconsidering separating classes. This is different than in the past, however. Girls still learn the same subjects as boys. They just study without boys in the classroom. Why? Well, scientists know that boys and girls learn differently. They also behave differently in the classroom. Boys are louder and more confident. They like to talk and show what they know. In general, girls are quieter. They prefer to listen and think carefully before they give their answers. When boys and girls are together, the boys can be too dominant. Also, boys and girls can bother each other. Instead of thinking about the lesson, they think about each other. In a separated classroom, they behave better and can focus on studying. Another reason for separated classes is that boys and girls often like different things. For instance, boys prefer stories with action and adventure. In an all-boys English class, the teacher can choose books that will be interesting to boys. This way, they will be more excited about the stories. Not all the classes are separated, just the main subjects, like English, math, science, and social studies. Still, some teachers think that separate education is not good. They worry that boys and girls will not learn how to work well together. Right now, less than 600 schools are trying separate classrooms. Time will show if it is a good idea or something that should be left in the past. Now open your question paper and look at Talker Lecture 3. You now have 35 seconds to look through the questions and the options in each question. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. Hi. 
I'd like to welcome all of you to the International Student Orientation at Norwalk College. I hope that your travels from your home country have been easy and that you are all settling in well. I believe I've met everyone, um, but just in case, I'm the Director for International Student Affairs, the person you can come to if you're having problems with your classes, your housing, visas. You're always welcome to stop by my office. We'll have several short workshops today, and we'll be talking about some common issues that international students face. Um, the first one that I want to deal with is about uh, communication, and in particular, nonverbal communication. Now, all of you have been studying English for some time. You have a good vocabulary, and you probably know all about verb tenses and modals and can ask directions and order from a menu. But communication is not only verbal. That is, talking is not the only language we use to communicate. Another way we communicate is through nonverbal communication, or body language. The term body language means the movements we use and the facial expressions we have, like smiling or frowning, the way we sit or stand, the way we touch or look at someone, um, the, the distance we stand from another person. Some psychologists say that more than 60% of our communication is actually done through body language. We do it without thinking or without ever having been specifically taught what the gestures or expressions mean. The problem is that body language is a little bit different in each culture, and this can often cause some problems with communication. Uh, here's an example. Um, in many places, it may be a little rude or disrespectful to look at another person directly in their eyes as you talk with them. So many international students will avoid this eye contact. But in America, we expect it. Oh, uh, we think of eye contact as a sign of honesty and straightforwardness. A American parents actually encourage their children to look people in the eye when speaking. Just imagine a conversation where an international student was trying to be respectful by not looking into the eyes of her American classmate. The American might wonder why her classmate wouldn't look directly at her, and the international classmate would be wondering why she was being stared at. The end result is an awkward and frustrating interaction. Oh, here's another one. Uh, Americans shake hands firmly when they greet each other, because to Americans, a firm handshake signifies strength and power. But a soft or limp handshake is considered a sign of weakness. In some cultures, handshakes are less common, or a gentle, soft handshake is acceptable. So students need to know that when shaking hands, it's important to be firm. In America, a thumbs-up sign, a, a thumb raised in the air... That is the end of Part 3. Now you have five minutes to check your answers and transfer your answers onto the answer sheet.